The next thing we're going to look at is blanket agreements. So you can create blanket agreements for sales or purchasing. So I'm going to open up the sales blanket agreement. So this is the document itself. So you first have to choose your business partner. Um, and I will show you one that I built already. So what we have here is uh, for Lowe's. Oops. So you add the, the, um, your business partner. And the agreement method in this case is going to be items method. So like I was saying, items, um, you could set up these for items or monetary. Monetary just being a total amount, items being specific. So the agreement type is specific. Um, it could also be general. Um, general just basically means that um, you are using the current um, the current price list for the clients and um, giving you know let's say a, a like a like a special rebate if they reach a certain goal. Uh, with specific, you're actually giving a special price on on items over a period of time. So you see here the start date is today. The end date is 30 days from now, and the signing date, let's say, is today. Our status is approved. Of course, these blanket agreements do not work if they're in draft, um, so you make sure that you need to make sure that they're approved. Um, if I want to set a re reminder, I can here. Yeah, so I'm going to click renewal, and so to do a reminder after 20 days because it expires in 30. So I'm going to click update. Any comments that you need can be added here. And the settlement probability percentage, um, you can assign that based on specific risks. Um, you know, if, if you know the customer is going to meet, meet it without issue, um, you can just do 100 and click update again. So on the details tab, these are the items that I decided to give a special price on. So if I click into this first item here, this motherboard, the base price, which is the price list we're using for this client, is $150. So I'm saying the plan quantity is 100, and I'm giving a special break for $140, so $10 off. So these are the open amounts. I can add any comments I want on the rows. And then this next tab here is documents. So this is any document that is associated with this business partner for sales orders um, or you know any deliveries or invoices that are associated with this uh, blanket agreement will appear here. So since these are all sales order document type, that is why the open quantity is still 100. So let's let's do another sales order for the remaining 50. As you saw, that was 50 there. So we have a one for 100. Um, we've already done a sales order for 50, so let's do a sales order for the other 50. Down the bottom here, there's a copy to feature. So I can copy to you know, the list of target documents. In this case, I'm going to do sales order. And I'm going to change these to 50. Choose a delivery date. And now you see in the remarks field here the origin is blanket agreement three. Now, the reason why I'm getting there is because the document settings are having it print <laughs> immediately and um, since this is just a demo environment, um, I'm not going to print anything. So the sales order has been added. So with the new thing in 9.1 is this refresh. Now we have all of these um, documents associated with it. Now the refresh did, just did kind of something strange because this is actually a purchasing agreement. Let's go back in the sales agreement. So if I go back into documents, so now that that second sales order was order was added. 
Okay. So this is how you, um, you use a blanket agreement. It works the same with purchasing. You can set up a blanket agreement with the vendor. Um, you know, this being the items method. Now let's look at the purchase one. So this one is a monetary method. So I've set it up so 10% for the first 10,000. Which actually, I, I was lying, it's 5%. <laughs> so if for the first $10,000 that the uh, client spends, they're getting 5% off. So if you look at the document, So let's, since it's a monetary method, we can't copy to. So let's let's create a purchase order for 1099 vendor. So instead of you, I could use one of my keys, but in this case, I'm just going to scroll up here. So I'm going to do a purchase order for 1099 vendor. Now you see there's a 5% discount here. So in this case, we're actually going to go over the limit, but it's still going to honor the discount. So I'm going to have this here. Going to go back. Let me just close out of here for real quick. Go back in. So here's the purchase order. That's part of it. So you'll see, you know, there's a unit price of 60. There's a quantity of 200. The discount was 5%. Okay. So that, in a nutshell, are blanket agreements. So again, you can set them up for purchasing or for sales. And you can do them through a monetary method, which means like a total amount of money spent, or you can do them on special pricing, either through uh, discounts or um, you know, regular pricing with a promise rebate after. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't create, it, it won't, like if you have a rebate agreement, it's, um, you would um, need to get a reminder from the blanket agreement itself that it's about to expire, so you could check on it to see whether or not you need to um, offer a rebate, which is essentially um, running a credit memo uh, for that client.